Gee, it's hot outside. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Highway with Kyle Shut. I am Kyle Shut, and it is good to be back. Uh, you may have noticed I've been gone for a while. That's because my personal life is in absolute shambles. Uh, <laughs> I've been couch hopping for the last four months. Uh, a lot of you know that my uh, my Airstream travel trailer um, that I live in full time uh, has been under warranty repair uh, for the last four months uh, because of supply chain issues. And uh, I'll have it back real soon, but it has absolutely thrown a monkey wrench in my uh, creative process. So thank you all for your patience. And uh, to tell you the truth, I probably needed a little bitty uh, break anyway just to, uh, you know, fill my cup back up with my creative juices. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself with the promises, but, you know, uh, trying to work on a new solo album, trying to uh, see what's up with Doom Side of the Moon, trying to get this podcast together, trying to finish my book, and uh, hey, there might even be a new sword record on the horizon, so... I've got a lot going on. Um, however, it is really good to be back uh, this podcast is going to be live at Psycho Vegas this year. Um, I'm, I'm going to be the the feet on the ground. I'm going to be the correspondent with more respondent. I'm going to be there all weekend long interviewing everybody that I can and uh, giving you uh, live coverage via my Instagram page. So check that out at Kyle Shot on Instagram during Psycho Vegas if you want to see my drunk ass get up to way too many antics. I've been thinking a lot about this show, this podcast, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, it, it really started... Uh, out of uh, out of necessity, you know, it was uh, in the middle of the pandemic. I didn't know what to do with my life. Uh, I basically got out every <laughs> contact in my phone and uh, wanted to see who wanted to come on and gab a little bit. Um, it's really grown in many different directions. You know, um, some of the interviews I'm more proud of than others. Um, some people don't like to talk so much. Some people don't like to talk to me so much. But on the whole, you know, it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, picking people's brains, uh, uh, friends and uh, new friends alike. So I, I've i been thinking about shaking it up a little bit. I, I, I want to add some, uh, add a little flavor to it up front and uh, give you guys a little bit more of me because I've got opinions, damn it. This world is a trash fire right now and I can't help but look at uh, music journalism as a fucking joke. So uh, we're going to start a new segment here where I just roast everybody who thinks they can write a headline uh, in a new segment called That's... Not news. All right, I would call out each individual outlet with these stories, but it seems like every one, you know, one outlet will run with a story and then everyone else has to uh, jump on board. So I'm just going to kind of roast heavy metal journalism as a whole here. So uh, let's get started. And there is some real news in here. We're going to cover the fun stuff, too. But uh, I just I, I love when you read a headline that just makes no fucking difference to anybody. All right. Some fucking breaking news here. Killswitch Engage is demoing an energetic, live sounding new record. Yeah, that's what bands do. I don't know a single band on the face of the earth that doesn't do a demo before their record. Do you need to make a press release about it? I don't know. You know why? Because that's. Not new. All right, what do we got here? Let's see. Here, here's a good headline. This is this is a good one. Uh, Nile, uh, one of the sickest bands on the planet. If you've never heard Nile, go check out In Their Darkened Shrines or At the Gates of Sethu. Fucking sick band. Uh, Nile parts ways with bassist slash vocalist Brad Paris, holding auditions for the part. Wow, that's news. I will say, um, damn. If there is ever a gig that uh, would be near impossible to fill uh it's being the bass player for Nile. i mean that is one of the most intricate sick fucking bands in the world i remember um when trivet uh, left the sword uh right after warp riders came out and we held uh, semi public auditions and that kind of was an interesting experience <laughs> i can only imagine the kind of people submitting uh to try out for Nile. uh carl sanders apparently uh is a pretty um strict band leader i would love to have him on the show maybe i'll do that well you know that's news so i'll, I'll, I'll give you that one let's see what else do we have here oh yeah here's a solid piece of journalism um <clears throat> could psychedelics have the power to change the way our society approaches everything from wellness to climate change to spirituality yes the answer is yes 
If you don't know that, then maybe it's time you took a trip down the Rainbow River. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you microdose. I don't care if you go on wizard trips, man. I, you know, these it's a plant that grows out of the ground that fucking shapes the way that your fucking mind perceives things. Yes, the answer is yes. You know why? Because that's not news. Oh, God, this one's sad. Uh, it's about one of my favorite bands. <laughs> uh, here we go. Kiss <laughs> thanked Austrian fans with a photo of the Australian flag. Eesh, I'm sorry, guys. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so, yeah, we uh, the sword just played with Kiss, actually, um, in Daytona Beach as part of uh, the Welcome to Rockville Fest. I had never seen Kiss before. Um, the one time that we were going to get to see them at Heavy Toronto back in uh, 2011, I think we got denied entry at the Canadian border and, uh, yeah, we weren't able to go see them or play our festival that day. Um, and I was crestfallen. Uh, they're honestly one of my favorite bands in the world. And, uh, I was thrilled to be able to be a part of the welcome to Rockville this year and, uh, open for kiss. Uh, it was a crazy Rockville this year. Um, it was hot. It was so hot and humid, um, and stormy and just, it was fraught with disaster. Uh, I think, uh, Ivan from, Five Finger Death Punch tripped over a laser fixture and like cut his retina in half because it shot him right in the eye. He, I think he's still wearing an eye patch. Um, it, it was, it was a f- kind of a disastrous festival, but we got to see Kiss. They were great. They came out. Um, it was a the second they started, it was a full on fireworks laser pyro show. Um, you know, Paul flew on a zip line across the crowd. It, it was everything you would want from a Kiss show. And um, I remember. People saying like, "Oh, they're not singing. They're not really playing." And I was watching them, and I and I was, I was convinced they were playing. You know, I mean, I was. I know how, what it's like to play on a stage that big. I know what it looks like when somebody's really playing and really not. And uh, it sounded fantastic. I, you know, thought they were really playing. And then about a week later, I think it was in Antwerp or something. Paul gets busted lip syncing, and just I don't know. The whole thing seems like it's falling apart. But then uh, <laughs> it looks like some ding dong in uh, Austria typed in it probably started to type in austrian flag and it just auto corrected to australian and he, they just didn't fact check anything and then put that on the graphic thanking all the fans in vienna with uh, the australian flag yikes um i love kiss but oof man it might be time to pack it up fellas i know they won't take my advice but uh I, i'm i i can admit that uh that's that's news <laughs> that's news fellas all right, we got one more here for you this week. Uh, everybody remembers Mickey D from Motorhead, right? A fantastic drummer, but this headline, I swear. Watch Mickey D perform possibly highest ever drum solo in the history of heavy metal. Possibly? Poss- you put possibly in the headline. You didn't, even, you didn't even check. I mean, sure, he's playing in a cage suspended high as fuck above the crowd, but everybody knows that the highest ever drum solo was played by Keith Moon. I don't know why bands keep paying their publicists to put out press releases like this because that's not news all right that's enough of that thank you for letting me get that out of my system (laughs) i hope you're as informed as i am now all right this week's guest on the show is mr tony foresta an old friend of mine the uh electrifying front man of municipal waste uh these dudes have been just pounding the pavement for over two decades now and uh they're one of the best damn live bands around everybody should go check them out their new album electrified brain uh came out this past july 1st we're gonna hear a song off of it at the end of the show but uh before then we're gonna have a little chat with my old friend tony and as always if you want to help this show out you can find us at patreon.com slash the highway For a few scant bucks, you can help me keep the lights on. You can get yourself a guitar lesson. You can get some sweet, sweet merchandise from me. We got all kinds of things. Send me a message. I love talking to y'all. Blah, 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 internet. It's time to do things my way. The Highway. Yo, what's up, Tony? Hey, good, good. I'm uh, trying to, I was trying to squeeze in a band practice. Um, I'm actually at the Cannibal Corpse practice space right now. I'm doing a band with Paul. 
Badass. So we're uh, so we're actually like practicing right now, but um. Yeah, thanks, thanks for taking the time out to do it, man. I appreciate it, dude. Uh, I know the the Waste has a new album coming out July first, and uh, yeah, I'm super fucking stoked on it, man. It, it sounds great. I got a, a, an advanced copy, and um, I mean, I, I like all your records. I've been a fan forever, but um, yeah, it's it's just fun. To, I, I feel like the the last one, Simon Punishment, was like kind of a little more not subdued, but just had more of like a, a slower groove to it, kind of like a like South of Heaven kind of feel, you know. But this one's just right back to just the fucking throat, you know. I love South of Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite one, honestly. I would, dude, I was I was listening to that like two days ago. It's funny. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, man. Um, it's funny because we were talking about like the last three singles we put out, except for this last one. It's all been like slower uh-huh. songs, and we didn't do that on purpose. But like what we put out, high speed steel before this last song, and we and I was like Ryan, like we keep putting out these like mid paced songs and singles, like. People are gonna think we're like slow now. <laughs> we're, just, we're older, fatter, you know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but now, nah, so I feel better now that we have a fast song released. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the new video too is fucking great, man. Um, not, I mean, it's. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I don't want to like. I don't know where the inspiration for it came from necessarily, but um, it's it's got like like a super cool old school like horror vibe to it to, to me anyway. Like it's got. Um, you ever see that movie Nightbreed? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's based off a, a Clive Barker book uh, called Cabal, but um, the the film adaptation of it, um, David Cronenberg uh, plays the like the the psychotic um, psychotherapist that is like the serial killer, and he he wears this fucked up mask in it, and like the 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 whole faceless um, like goons in your in your yeah. head, like really totally reminded me of that Cronenberg kind of era, like weird. Oh, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> well, that guy, I mean, the dude Norman that that worked on that um the work that actually directed the video he's he's worked on a lot of like heavy hitter horror movies i'm actually looking up his uh air imdb right now while i'm talking to you um and it's fucked up all right so norman cabrera the guy uh our director he'd worked on hellboy 2 but he does special effects god damn and makeup he just did scary stories. He did Attack the Block. He did uh, Wishmaster, like OG, like ninety seven or eighty. Yeah, ninety seven. Dude, it's fucked up, man. If you, like, he worked on the new Ghostbuster. That's fucked little up. Yeah. Dead. <laughs> you know the movie uh, The End. This is the end. Uh huh. Well, he did fucking Cabin in the Woods, man. God damn! <laughs> like, wow. Kill, Kill Bill. I mean, dude, it's it goes all the way back to um, like fucking Spawn. You know, he did that shit. He did. Brain oh, he scan. totally. Yeah, even those the, that those faces look like the, the Spawn before without the mask on. Yeah, I could totally see that. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's been at it since he was a kid. He worked on Harry and the Hendersons. Good you know, God. like <laughs> yeah, man. And he's just been a fan of the band and a friend and. Um, he, you know, he called in a ton of favors to get the video done. I love shit like he's that. He's cool as fuck, dude. He's such a cool guy. It's weird because he's like, our, I guess he's older. I guess he's a bit older than us. I'm 46. I mm-hmm. think he's in his 50s, but he looks so young and acts young. And uh, I mean, it's inspiring, you know? He had fucking Rick Baker there at the video shoot hanging out. They're like buddies. <laughs> fucking... I'm like, what are we fucking reliving thriller here? Like, crazy man. No, I, I love that. Like, <laughs> yeah, like b- bands like ours, like that's that's kind of like our only hope sometimes to like make a decent video because it's so fucking expensive. You gotta like just. <laughs> it's like, does anybody famous like our band? Can you call in so many favors, please? <laughs> and yeah, it's sure. It, it, you know, like, there's no fucking way that our vi- like what we should have paid for and what we paid for right. for that video are probably way way different. <laughs> I fucking love film projects, man. If I had all the money in the world, I would just sit around doing just film shit all day. But God, it's so expensive. It's so much fun. I, I was able to like fly out my best friend for it too. I was like, dude, we're we're filming this video. You gotta come. You just gotta come see this. Like how it works. I got him to like have be a little cameo. He was like, yeah. you can barely see, you can barely see him, but uh, yeah, he's in the video. So that was kind of cool. Like my friend, I grew up with. So. He got to come out with me and, you know, shoot it for a couple of days. It was fun. 
That's awesome, man. Uh, fucking, I, uh, I, like I said, I've been a fan a long time. I, I don't know if I've said this before on the show, but um, actually the first show that I ever played in Austin was opening for Municipal Waste. This would have been uh, right when the Crucial Unit split came out. I think y'all were on tour with Catheter. And, um, yeah, Holy just, shit. Oh, I know. wow. That, yeah, that was... was- was it a pizza place or no? It was like a, it was a little coffee shop on the east side. Like uh, it was called Sacred Cup. Um, now it's I think it's like a closed building now. But um, yeah, Ben White was actually uh, he had a grindcore band called Kids in Service to Satan that uh, that I joined. Oh, and then, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think he hooked y'all up with that show, and then we just kind of weaseled our way in there. But um, yeah, we took y'all to our house uh, after after that show and just partied all fucking night. <laughs> and like I gotta oh, say, like. Was Dave Dianato in that band? Who? Dave Dianato? Uh, no, um, Ed Davis was, if you remember him. Nah. Uh, Greg I do remember that band, though. I remember, I remember Kids in Service, for sure. Kids in Service of Satan. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave was probably at the show, but no, no, he, he wasn't in the uh, the band yet. If anybody doesn't know who Dave Dianato is out there, he's uh, he holds the world record for uh, longest guitar solo. I think he did a 25-hour a uh, guitar solo, <laughs> <laughs> like maybe like ten years. It was ago. actually streamed. It was actually streamed. I watched some of it. Yeah, yeah. It was like, I think he. I, I don't think he technically got the Guinness World Record, but everybody knows he fucking did it. So yeah, if anybody out there thinks they can top that, good luck. It was but, pretty uh, awesome. But yeah, y'all. I mean, y'all back in the day, dude. Like, you you lived that fucking lifestyle, man. Like, we absolutely destroyed our house. That night after that show, and uh, <laughs> I would, all, you know, once the sword kind of started picking up and touring a lot, we we ran around a lot of the same circles and stuff. And every, I feel like we were always like just following each other on tour or whatever, you know, just kind of like that. And I would hear stories about, you know, y'all just uh, absolutely wrecking people's homes <laughs> and shit. Like, I, I gotta say, just respect for for walking the walk. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's you know. It's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> For sure. I remember that show too. Um, not to go back on that, I remember because um, Gerardo from Catheter got arrested that day. I remember that. Um, and and Brandon had to play drums for for Catheter and Municipal Ways. And uh, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, that was a crazy tour, <laughs> and a lot of the nights on that tour ended with that situation where houses are getting wrecked and we were young and, and, uh, really like to drink. <laughs> yeah. I remember, uh, in the but backyard, yeah, you set up like, like, uh, this, like, it was, uh, I don't know what you call it. It was like almost like a barrel race, but you put like, let's see if I can describe this and make it sound fun. Uh, so you put like two tall cans on the ground and then maybe like, uh, like 10 yards away, you put another two tall cans on the ground you pick one can up and you do a dead sprint while you chug the beer to, you know, the other cans and you drop that can, pick another one up, run all the way back, drop that one, pick another one up, run all the way back. And so you basically like slam four tall boys while running at full speed in about 30 seconds. And you, uh, you challenge some guy to it. And, uh, I gotta say you whooped his ass. I've never seen anybody (laughs) chug a tall can while running at full speed before. We're good at athletics while drinking. It's just part of like playing show, playing shows. You like your body's just kind of like <laughs> trained to do that. <laughs> oh well, yeah, well at least we're, I, I can't believe we're still alive. Can you believe we're uh, still doing like these bands? Did you think that like it would last this long? Like when when you were started, or did you even think about it at all? Oh, me and Ryan were talking about that the other day. We're like. Yeah, it's like how fucked up it is where it was like literally like something we were doing for fun and then it just turned into like what it is and it is it's still fun but no i didn't i'm i can't believe how old i am now mm-hmm. <laughs> and i'm like a fucking band practice it's like oh my god like this is <laughs> fucking crazy this is what i did all right <laughs> and like i don't know it, it, I don't, it's amazing i've seen I mean, I'm sure you have too. I mean, you've seen some amazing shit. You've been able to like perform with people that inspired you to play music, and uh, it's weird. I never would have thought this. My career path would have been seeing songs about throwing up on people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, it, it uh, 
one thing that dawned on me, like just as, as as time goes by, you just look at it all and you're like, fuck, like we outlasted like all of our favorite bands, like you know, time wise. It's crazy, but like just yeah. in, in the beginning, it just seemed like they were like this fucking institution kind of thing that would never go away. But, but you know, now it's almost to the point where we're like making comeback tours and shit. We're like, God damn, we're old. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I'm honored. You know, it's an honor and, and uh, like kind of blows my mind still to this day, like thinking about it. And uh, yeah, it's so fun as shit. I mean, dude, we're playing with Exodus this weekend, you know, like I get, and I'm like friends with those guys mm-hmm. now. It's like fans that I, we used to like, I don't, I still do. Fuck yeah. it. You know, and it's like, they're like, I'm getting texts. Like, I can't wait to see you guys. We're going to hang out. Like, you know, it's like my, my fucking buddies now. It's like people that are like your heroes. Mm-hmm. Fucking weird. Yeah, it is. Weird world. But, um, but I love it. <laughs> the, the weirdest one that ever happened to me was, um, it was, it was a while back. I think it was like oh nine. Um, it was like Christmas, and we had just come off that big like Metallica tour, and uh, through just another series of you know events, I befriended Jello Biafra. But like one, it was like Christmas morning, and I got a text from Kirk Hammett and Jello Biafra, both like, "Merry Christmas!" <laughs> I was just like, "What, like, the what fuck? is going on right now?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that. But uh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen you guys a bunch over the years, and uh, it's it's fun. Like, it's, uh, y'all are one of the more, I guess, like lighthearted, violent bands, you know. And uh, you would have like, um, you know, like trampolines that people could, you know, pogo off of into the pit, and like, you know, just had beer bongs going around. How? I mean, I th- I'm I'm pretty sure we can talk about this. Like, how how often did people come up to y'all like with broken arms that were like just totally like not going to sue you. They were just stoked to be there and like wanted to say hi or like, you know, how many like beers did underage kids accidentally like do out of the beer bong or, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> uh, it's pretty common, man. The stage diving shit was pretty out of control for a while where it was like, man, like I'm so glad nobody ever like was seriously injured, but I've, I've seen people run full speed and dive with no regard of where the fuck they're diving. And uh-huh. then like in Europe, this dude ran across the stage and just dove and dove directly into a wall. Oh. Like, didn't that look for the wall and just fucking, it, it's like a Tom and Jerry skit, like splat or like poles in the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> shit like that, where it's like, just look where you're going at least. And it's so funny, dude. Like we're going to keep going back to the old shit and stage injuries, but I'm literally like, I'm, with Paul from Campbell Corpse, like they played in Richmond. Like he was just telling me like five minutes ago before this interview, like uh, our drummer, Dave Whitty was at a Cannibal Corpse show in Richmond and fucking stage dove and fucked his head up. <laughs> like, cause nobody caught him. Jesus. It was like, Dave, Dave's like, like five years older than me and he's like still stage diving <laughs> but they said Cannibal Corpse like almost stopped playing because they were like they were like oh fuck Dave's dead oh man <laughs> and then fucking witty like we're pra- they had you know, this waste practice in Richmond like the next day and he had to stop drumming because his fucking head hurt for Jesus stage Christ <laughs> Well, that's, that's we still fucking do this shit, man. Like we're idiots. Richmond's fucking tough, though. I didn't, I didn't get to see any of the uh, the Avail reunion shows, but like I saw some footage of it, and I saw some definite dudes in their fifties like hiking themselves up on stage and being like, "Okay, hang on, let me let me catch my breath. I'm gonna do it." Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was one of those guys, man. I stayed them. <laughs> I fucking I I did the dive, yeah, and yeah. I, there's a few bands now. Like I, I'm like, all right, I'll. I'll stay inside for obituary. I'll stay inside for at the gate. I'll stay inside at a veil show. <laughs> but you know, that's but it, the, the list is getting smaller and smaller. The, right. the more my knees, I just got fucking knee surgery. Oh man, <laughs> we are getting yeah, it's, it's like, I know. Whatever. I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, now you got another like five years of stage diving in you at least, right? Yeah, well, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, one of the one of the funnest times I saw y'all, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm I'm pretty sure it was Naked Ray Gun. Um, like y'all were playing outside at Red Seven back in the day, but like you were, it was during South by, and y'all were playing at the same time as Naked Ray Gun, who was like 
at the wall behind you, and you like climbed up on top of the wall, and you were like, "Hang on, everybody! I've never seen Naked Ray Gun. I just got to watch him for a second. <laughs> you're talking about okay yeah um oh yeah i know exactly what you're talking about it's like a day show yeah, right uh-huh. yeah 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 <laughs> you're like i'm that's sorry i'm sorry funny. everybody hang on hang on <laughs> you know got gotta catch it when you can you can <laughs> Um, well, um, I know, are y'all still yeah. doing um because uh um, the waste is fucking great and everything and all, and all but um also I really loved Iron Reagan uh, when uh, you and uh, Phil and everybody had a uh, uh, sparked that uh, project up is that still going do you think or uh, are you kind of just um, right now I mean I'm doing a new band down in Florida uh-huh. I, I moved so I right. don't really live in Richmond right. so the idea of Iron Reagan was already exhausting just the way that it, it kind of snowballed into like this fucking other full-time band yeah. and <laughs> so that shit's definitely on the back burner for a long time because i just can't do two out of town bands now like we're, like i live fucking 13 hours away uh-huh. from, from richmond now so um i'm more focused on like doing shit lo- a local band down here like it's, got, it's me and uh me and paul from cannibal and, and my buddy mike from warthog I don't know if you remember his '90s band Reversal of Man, Jeff. No. Um, but he plays he plays uh, bass. So yeah, we've been we got a record written. So I'm kind of working on that shit now. Fuck yeah! Just to have like a local like band where I live with like dudes that live here, and uh, it's fucking it's really cool. So that that's kind of what I'm focused on right now. Mm-hmm. That and like, and I mean, really, like the past two years has been municipal way shit. Like I've been obsessed with it because I really want this record to be fucking killer. So yeah, there, I'm not saying that we won't do it, but it's definitely on the back burner for a while mm-hmm. for sure. That's awesome. I, it, it was a really great band. And um, I had one really fun time uh, that happened. We were, uh, y'all were playing the lost. Well, I don't know if you remember this, but um, uh, I just came to the show just to, you know, party, have a good time. And uh, a friend of mine there, uh, I won't say her name, but she uh, came up to me and she was like, hey, Kyle, uh, this guy is really creeping me out. Would you mind just like pretending to be my boyfriend, you know, for a little bit just to, so he goes away? I was like, yeah, of course, whatever. So, you know, kind of hanging out, just have my arm around her, you know, just real innocent, but just trying to like, you know, be there for her and stuff. And uh, the dude that was bothering her just kind of lost his shit and started just like fucking, you know, wanted to throw bows. We were sitting outside and uh, <laughs> he... As we were like about to, you know, I was getting the security involved. I was like, you need to get this guy the fuck out of here. And he was just about to go nuts. And I turned around, and all five of you guys were just standing there with your arms crossed, just ready to stomp this fucker if he put a hand on me. <laughs> and uh, I gotta say that that meant a lot. Thank you all very much, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're buddies. Yeah, I don't fuck with a buddy. No, dude. Can't be fucking with buddies. I'm <laughs> creeping on girls, dude. Like fuck that shit. <laughs> but uh yeah yeah, yeah. Well, well. I, remember night, I don't i don't i, I remember that night because uh i stayed at felix's house and i <laughs> i went back to his house after that show and <laughs> this is so crazy but it was cheetah chrome and bobby from pentagram and they're like we've Jesus. been waiting for you and they were like party they were partying all night and i was like i was like fuck you guys <laughs> I was like, I got a flight in the morning. I'm going up there and going to bed. I'm not fucking playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Cheetah is nuts, dude. I haven't seen him. In a few, I think he moved uh, out of Austin. I don't know where he went, but he, yeah, I don't know. I swear to God, I'll never fucking for the room being like, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> like, what planet am I on? <laughs> I got Felix in his fucking bedroom, and I went upstairs. And I had uh, a bag of Whataburger food, and I laid on the floor with a blanket and ate Whataburger on the ground and passed out. It's the fucking life, baby. <laughs> it's the only way I know how to do it. <laughs> well, uh, That's how I un- unwind before a flight. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I know... Um, uh, the new, Like I said, the new record, Electrified Brains, coming out July 1st. Um, y'all have... I mean, I'm sure you have a grip of tours lined up already and stuff. Uh, I know you're hitting the road. Uh, you said with Exodus real soon, but is that a whole tour? Um, no. Um, that's just a one-off with Exodus. But the tour is consists of uh, Minas Waste, Integrity, and Bewitcher. Jeez. And, and they're, they're all, we're all playing that show. 
and and then that, that there's a ton of other bands on that show and it's in syracuse it's like voivod's playing and um Sick. fucking uh <laughs> extinction ad yeah it's, it's all like killer thrash bands and then um we're gonna break off us integrity and bewitcher and then do like a week of shows together um and then there's like this heavy metal fest in pittsburgh that uh ryan's band bats playing so like we're all just gonna go to that show and party Hell yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah yeah oh man yeah we love pittsburgh too so like, yeah it's gonna be fun that's gonna be kind of like the end of that tour i'll, I'll just hang out in pittsburgh for a couple of days and watch my band members other band play and <laughs> drink beer <laughs> yeah so uh um, support, support dude. right right but uh I just I also just wanted to ask um just uh, uh what brought you down to Florida? I mean was it just like just kind of getting sick of uh sick of Richmond needed a change or No, it's, it was like a 5 year plan. <laughs> like uh it it's not, it wasn't even 5 year. I mean I been, I was talking about it for 10 years like to where uh-huh. my bandmates were like, like sick of me here sick of me talking about it but um like I had a house in Richmond and I didn't want to sell it. It was a piece of shit. It was like falling apart. Um, but it was growing up in property value right. just because, right. um, but anyway, so I was like, I, I grew up here. I'm, I'm from St. Petersburg and I lived, I lived here until like my last year of high school and then I moved to Richmond. So that's why I'm like, yeah, it's just, I think that's why I'm used to touring so much is cause I went to like three different high schools and like, <laughs> I'm used to just like meeting people and like just uh-huh. traveling and you know, moving around a lot. So, um, <clears throat> I really loved it here. I literally grew up. I mean, I was here since I was a baby and then moved when I was like 16 or 17. I can't remember if it was 17. <laughs> and then, so yeah, all, the plan was always to move back. It just kept getting pushed back and back. And I feel like my bandmates kind of thought I was like bullshit. <laughs> and then finally I got, you know, I was like, all right, I put the house up for sale. I thought it was going to take a few months and it was sold in like fucking two days. Jesus. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. So I was like, all right, I just got to get out. And then, uh, so yeah, I moved and, and, uh, you know, packed up the U-Haul, moved down here, me and my girlfriend, like, uh, you know, it was cool. Like, um, I thought it was gonna be more time, but like, I let everyone know ahead of time, like I'm putting the house up for sale. I don't know when I'm moving, but it's going to be soon. So we kind of planned it accordingly where we didn't have any tours booked for like six months or something. Mm -hmm. But the plan with that was that we were going to write electrified brain. We were going to write that record. And then, and like while I was in the process of moving, I wanted I wanted my girlfriend to get her bearings down here. So then, so the first like run of shows was going to be Miss Waste and Black Dahlia Murder and um, Testament, and that was literally right like that was April, right? So Oof. when the, when was shut shut yeah. down was March, right? Yeah. So like, it was weird. So my time off from the band was like six months before. You know, like even like both bands, you know, I was uh-huh. like, guys, I'm moving I'm out. I got it. You know, we're, we're just going to write music. So we started writing the record a little bit before the pandemic. We thought we were going to have it done before that Testament tour. And we did not have it done or even close <laughs> to written. So it, it ruled because we were kind of rushing shit. And then we're like, well, who knows when we're going to fucking tour again. So let's just take our time with this record and focus on that. Yeah. Uh, it, gave, it gave me a lot of time to just like hang out, fall back in love with where I grew up and, um, and get my girl, like fucking her life in order and, you know, get a new job and, and, you know, figure out if she digs it there. And yeah, she fucking loves it. So yeah, it worked out really good. So yeah, I, I mean, a positive thing with all the horrible, you know, COVID stuff is that I was able to like, I think it gave me a little bit more time to, to write a better record and to like get my ba- bearings down here and like start over. And uh, it's been cool. I miss Richmond. I miss my friends, but um, it's, it's cool. I, I think it's a time in my life now where it's like, I guess this is like my midlife crisis. I'm like, All right, I gotta get back to my roots. I'm my roots. Grow up. <laughs> Well, hell yeah, man. I, I, I really appreciate you sitting down and uh, taking the time to talk. And, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about uh, the new record. Um, I always ask, uh, uh, you know, if you want to play a new song off of it. I know Electrified uh, Brain is already out as a single, so we can play that if you want, or we can play another one that you're real proud of. Dude, it's this, there's kind of no rules on this show, so whatever you want, man. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, let's play one that's, like, not um, 
Let's play one that's like not w- w- the one that we already put out. So let's do like let's do Crank the Heat. I like that one a lot, and nice. it's a summer, the summertime jammer. So Hell hopefully, yeah. Um, yeah, that hopefully that'll be a good summer get out of the house and, and party song. <laughs> well, we're gonna play it right now, man. Tony, thank you so much for calling in. I appreciate you. Yeah, man, good good to hear from you, and um, yeah, let's hang soon, man. It's always great to see your face when we're out on the road. I'd love to, man. I got. Uh, and you, uh, and, and we're like, Stomp a motherfucker. Who knows? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a good friend of mine and the the guy that helps me produce the show, Austin. Yeah, he actually lives down in Tampa, and I've been uh, looking for an excuse to go visit him. So, if I do that, I'll give you a call. Maybe we can uh, have a couple of beers. I would love that. I would love that. Give me feel some inside the yeah. Cry the heat. Tuning into the highway with Kyle Shut. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe if you want to keep up with the latest episodes. And don't forget to check out the Highway with Kyle Shut playlist on Spotify to keep up with all the rad tunes that we play on the program. And if you need some new gear in your life, don't forget to check out Reverend Guitars, Railhammer Pickups, Idiot Box Effects, and Ray Ray Decker Cables. Stay high, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs>